you world. Do you do it in timed or untimed? Do you do random or do you do subject specific questions? It's a hot topic of debate, but if you want to know how to maximize your you world efforts to get the best score possible, stick around. That's what we're going to be talking about today. I've had this conversation thousands of times over the last 10 plus years of working with med students. Should I do random questions? Should I do subject specific questions? Do I do timed or untimed? Let's settle this debate because it's actually going to depend on a couple things. I'm going to talk to you about that right now. Now, timed versus untimed, always do timed. It's going to help you build that stamina to get through blocks of questions. So first of all, that's not even a debate. Do timed. Now, whether you do random versus subject specific really depends on where you're at. Now, I mean where you're at as are you very, very strong in your basic sciences? So if you just got out of school and you studied for, let's say, your school's comp and you've, you're in a place where you know your stuff very, very well, then doing things in random might be the best thing for you because you want to really test your knowledge. You want to challenge yourself. Now, if you've been out of school or for a while or you don't feel like you have a strong basic sciences foundation or even clinical sciences, depending on if you're doing step one or CK, if you need to build, you need to focus. Let me say that again. If you need to build your foundation, the only way to do this is to focus on one thing at a time. That's where subject specific questions will be way more valuable to you. And you want to look at a Q bank as a valuable learning tool. So let's say you want to uh, get ready for step one or CK and you have a very weak foundation. If you start doing things in random mode, right? You're all over the place. You can't focus on anything in particular, i.e. you won't get better in anything in particular. You might have a well um, spread out general knowledge, but as far as really mastering anatomy, embryo, renal phys, uh, pulmonary phys, pulmonary anatomy, every single sub topic within the big topics, if you don't focus on each one individually, you won't be able to build that foundation that'll allow you to thrive and then get to that point where you can then start really testing yourself and applying your knowledge and challenging yourself in the random mode. So it depends where you're at. So if you, like I said, are in a position where your basic sciences, your clinical sciences is strong, you can go right into random. If it's not, and, and if you don't know for sure, you're saying, I'm not sure if, my, then it probably isn't. Because if you know, you know. If you're not sure, you're probably going to get a lot more out of going subject specific. So this is what you would do. Start you world in subject specific mode. Do all the questions, build that foundation, and then you can go on to a second question bank like Amboss or whatever you want to do. Then you can do those in random. That's where you challenge yourself, test yourself. But when you challenge and test yourself from a place of having a strong foundation and a really good understanding, that's where you get the most value. If you just start out by randomizing things and you don't know what you're doing, you get no value from that. You actually get frustrated, um, you lose motivation, and you're not determined because it's like it's so overwhelming. So start with the basics, build that foundation, then move on. Now I want to talk to you about the value of each option the value of random versus subject specific because students never ask this. They always say, what do I start with? So I want to talk to you about the value of each subject specific versus random. So like I just said, when you are focusing on subject specific, the value here is that you can focus. And if you can focus on one thing, then you're going to get better. And I use this analogy a lot. What if I want to learn languages? I want to learn a bunch of languages. I want to learn Italian, French, Polish, Russian. So every day I'm going to take one hour and I'm going to dedicate it to each one of those languages. How long will it take me to get better at all those languages? Probably a long time. A, because I'm trying to learn a bunch of things at the same time that are brand new to me. And B, I'm not dedicating a lot of time to each. I'm just sort of dabbling. If you dabble, you're not going to build a really strong foundation and you're not going to learn things to the point where you can then apply them and be challenged and do well. So for example, if we are doing our questions in a random mode and we have, let's say, a 50-50 understanding, so we know 50% of what we think we should know, and then we go do our, our exam and we get challenged on something that we're not 100% confident in, chances are you're not going to do very well. Now, if you focus on one thing at a time, What's going to happen is, yes, it seems like there's so much more you need to do, but if you focus on one thing and you master it, then you've mastered it. Then you move on to the next and you master it. So if you're trying to learn languages, 
Don't just do all of them at the same time. Pick a language, learn it, master it, then move on. That way you focus so much that it sort of becomes ingrained in you. And you might take a couple months from off from actually speaking it, but it's still there because you put so much work into it. Same thing applies here. So the value of doing subject specific questions is it allows you to focus and it also allows you to ID your weaknesses, which then allow you to go and work on those weaknesses outside of your world. So what I mean by this is if you were doing, let's say cardio anatomy and you just got your butt kicked, you didn't do very well. You got 30%. You know, that's an area you need to focus on. What though, if you're doing random and you didn't really even have a cardio anatomy question, but you did a bunch of random things and you don't know now what your weaknesses are because yeah, you made a mistake here. You made a mistake there. You didn't make a bunch of mistakes in one area. So you can't really identify it as a weakness. That's a huge problem because then what do you do? You move on. You don't focus on that and improve it. What does that mean? It means you're going to go into your exam thinking you're a lot better than you are. That's a recipe for a average or below average score. And we do not want that to happen to you. Now, the value of random, the value of random is it allows you to test yourself, which of course is super important at the right time. It allows you to challenge yourself. What do I mean? What's the difference? Well, testing yourself is basically saying, I'm going to do random questions and see where I'm at. If I'm doing well, I'm testing myself. I'm doing well. If you challenge yourself, what you're doing is you're taking what you know and you're purposely putting yourself into a situation where you're likely to make mistakes so you can identify even continued weaknesses or things you still need to work on and get better and better. If you consistently test yourself, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to improve. But if you challenge yourself, it means you're trying to find weaknesses or holes or gaps in your knowledge by challenging yourself. That is going to allow you to get better. How could you challenge yourself? Maybe you do three or four blocks of a question bank in random back to back to back to back. By the second or third block, you're starting to feel a little tired. This though is where you can really see, do you know your stuff or not? If you get tired and you can still do well, you've challenged yourself and you've overcome. If you start to see that after three blocks, you don't do very well, then maybe you don't know your stuff as well as you really should. And that's where the value of doing random questions comes in. So what's my recommendation? My recommendation is basically going to look like this. If you need to build your foundation, meaning you're not hundred percent confident that you have a solid grasp on your basic or clinical sciences, start doing everything in subject specific mode, do an entire question bank, you world in subject specific mode, work on your weaknesses, improve everything. If you are in a position where you have a solid foundation, then go random. Okay. But you should always make sure you aren't rushing things. A lot of students just want to do, they want to sort of skip the hardest part, which is building that foundation. And so what they'll do is they'll say, okay, let me just do them random because I want to test myself and get ready in a month. That's not the way to do this. If you're not going to test yourself and work the system properly, work the system, meaning going through all the steps that you need to do well on your exams, then you're just going to get to that point where you're frustrated. I've talked to countless students who they're working so hard for months and months, some of them years, and they're not making any progress. Why? Because at the core of it, the foundation is lacking. And so they learn things, they read first aid or they do questions, but they don't actually go in and fill in any gaps. So when they keep challenging themselves, they're just not getting any better. So you have to make sure that you're honest with yourself, give yourself enough time, not too much, but give yourself time to really build that foundation so that then you can take things a step further, challenge yourself, test yourself, assess yourself with NBMEs, that's really the best way to get to where you want to be. Crush your step one, crush your CK. So that's what my recommendations are for USMLE world. Hot topic. Everyone's always debating this. I've been working with students since 2009. I've tried everything, test everything, assessed every strategy. This is going to be the best way to put yourself in a position where you'll score to your potential. At the end of the day, it's not about shortcuts, magic bullets, uh, magic pills to get you a 250, 260 in a week. It's about putting in the work, doing things the right way so you can actually get the results. All right. Hopefully that was helpful. If it was, please do me a huge favor. Hit the like button below. If you want to see more like this, subscribe, set up notifications. We'll let you know every time we release a brand new video. All right. Thank you for spending some time with me today. I hope that helped. See you on the next video. Hey there. Thanks for watching. We appreciate you spending some time with us today. We've got a couple more great videos. We got one up here. We got one up there. See you guys on the next video.